over. Oh, wait, 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 is this where we've got? What is going on here? I thought we were still in a break. What is this? Honestly, shambles. Uh, Eric Ten Hag is staying at Manchester United. You can have your say. 03 717 Let's go to Beth Tucker, uh, presenter from the United Stand. She joins us now. Hi, Beth. Hey, Beth. Hi, nice to speak to you guys. Thank you. Yeah, Beth, thanks for coming on. Um, look, obviously, huge talking point. How, how, firstly, how do you feel about it? I'm honestly very, very, very happy with this decision. I know there's some people in the fan base that were expecting a different outcome, but I would say, obviously, I speak to the fans every single day. The majority of United fans wanted this decision, and I think it is the best decision, especially when you look at the options that were available. There was no standout candidate. So, Eric Ten Hag, back-to-back trophies. I understand it was a poor finish this season, but I think with the proper backing, he deserved another chance. So, I'm happy about it. What... Where does he need to go, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, and the and the, the scouting and the, and the CEO and the you know, director of football? What what is their next move then to ensure that Ten Hag does have the support around him? Well, they need to back him for starters. I think there's conversations about a new contract because he does only have a year left in his deal. And so, how long would you give him, Beth? What you are you saying? Add another two to the one? Yeah, I would Three. say so. Yeah. I would say so. so. I would. I, I would. I would say add two. I think three is a little bit of a stretch because yeah. obviously he's not completely proved himself. But you can't, you can't go into another season with just a year left on his deal because again yeah. you're showing the players you don't back him, you're showing the fans yeah. that. So you've got to give the contract. Yeah, okay. D- does he need to change his style of play? You know, we obviously there's been loads of talking points about how he played at Ajax, that football he played, and he come out and said, oh, "I haven't got the players." Some of the performances last season were so bad. Does he think now that maybe he's got a bit more leeway and he goes, right, I've won a couple of trophies, I'm going to I'm gonna change the style of football? I mean, I think he absolutely has to, he has to enforce a style of football. I think a lot of times last season you could see bits and you could see drips and drabs, but mm. like you say, the majority of the games under United, you didn't have a clue what we were trying to do. It was, yeah. it was awful. And he blamed a lot of that on injuries. So it'll be interesting to see with obviously, we're not going to go into a season, hopefully with, with many injuries. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see with obviously new players we bring in and with a squad that mm. is hopefully fit if he can deliver that. And that's a big that's a big if that a lot of fans are waiting for because mm. that's what they expect. Two of the best performances of the season, certainly back end, was Maynou and, and Garnacho, two young players. So he's, he's certainly had a big impression on them. No, I think that's a big reason why he's kept his job. I, I was just reading, actually, I was just reading up on, on a few of the, what the journalists have said and I think a lot of the fan base is, is a big, big reason to keep Ten Hag is the work he's doing with the youth. Obviously, Garnacho and Maynou have been absolutely mm. huge for us and it says a lot for the senior squad that they were two of our best players this season, to be honest. But mm. there's other very promising youth talents coming through and Ten Hag obviously has good relationship with them. Even Amari Forson, who's just left United, has put out a post on social media saying that he was thankful to the manager and how good he was with him. So I think a lot of the youth players do do like the manager, which which holds him in good stead because United's obviously built on mm. built on that. Beth, what did they do with Marcus Rashford? It's a difficult decision to be honest with you, because I from from what I'd seen, I didn't know if he had the best relationship with Eric Ten Hag, he does seem to play him a lot. So you would like to think everything's sort of resolved and, and, and on the right track. I think Rashford has to stay because he's on a massive contract that not many other clubs would want to pay him that wage for, for what he currently is offering. And the, the obviously is a player there, but Ten Hag has to get the best out of him. Not only Ten Hag, the player has to look himself in the mirror. He's obviously not going to England and he has to train really hard in the preseason, try and get himself back to the way we know he can be. And what I hope for Rashford is I hope massively he has the bit between his teeth. He's thinking, you know, I'm going to show Southgate why I should have been playing. I'm going to show everybody who has been criticising me what I can do. And he goes into next season and he smashes it. But United in a real a, a real predicament here because you're looking to bring in a right winger, which we are doing. Ganacho's flying. Ganacho is a left winger and plays in Rashford's position. Rashford's on silly money a week. You know, Bruno apparently wants a contract um, improvement because of, of the money that the likes of Rashford's on and what he mm. provides. So United have got big decisions to make, but because of his wage, he'll end up staying. And I think he has to deliver next season. He has to. Mm. All right, Beth, pleasure. Cheers, Beth. Appreciate, Beth. appreciate Thank time. Thank you very much, Take guys. All right, see you later. Beth Tucker there, presenter from the United Stand. Let's go to Adam. He's a Man United fan, right, Ad? All right, Ad. Evening, gents. All right. How are you, Ad? What's you good? Happening, you all right, mate? Yeah, not too bad. How are we? Oh, good. Are you the, the, are you the smash burger guy? Are you smash burger? Yes, sir. Mm, yeah. But you know what? But you know what? Before I talk about Ten Hag, I just wanted to say, Jamie, I saw, I saw a little documentary about you on YouTube earlier on today, and I thought, you know what? You showed a lot of character and strength in that man, and... 
It was good on you, but I've seen you open up like that. Thank you, mate. I, I, I know it's been going around. I, I, yeah, I appreciate it. It was, it was, it was a tough watch. I'll be honest, it was a, it was a tough watch. To see, because we're normally used to seeing your bubbly vibe and your funny vibe. So mm. seeing, the, seeing you open up, man, does it done a lot for men out there. Trust me, man. Thank you, it's, mate. It's Thank you. Appreciate open it. Up, man. Well done, man. And, and I'm sorry for everything you went through, man. Thank you, mate. I appreciate that. I'm top man. Uh, let's talk about Man United. Um, Ten Hag, how are you feeling? I'm just glad it's been sorted. No, I'm not happy that he's staying, but I'm glad this situation's not dragged on until after the Euros and we're still trying to figure out what our next move is and if someone's still going to come in. That's it. Like, now we know he's staying. Let, we, we just got to, like, let's just get behind him now. There's no point of, of being showing any more negativity. We've had so much of that over the last two seasons, three seasons. Let's just get behind him now. The, the board have obviously seen something and they're throwing their support behind him. We just got to do the same thing as fans, you know. We just got to get behind him now and just hopefully see see something positive now. Do you not think though the fact that it took as long as it did, and it, I feel it kind of undermined him a little bit. The fact they were reportedly talking to other managers, they were potentially looking away from Ten Hag. I, I don't think it's been I'm handled surpri- particularly to be honest, I'm well. If I'm honest, he never took, I'm surprised he never took it upon himself to say to, to even like to to not come out and make a statement or to say he wants to go because. Can you imagine, like, you're hearing in papers or on, on the news or on the radio he's not that so many people is he? are being linked? Yeah, he's not... yeah, but obviously, a lot. I mean, a lot of people are being linked with your job, and you're still there. Yeah. And I think a lot of people got a bit like sympathy people. with Ten Hag. Actually, it must, you know, we we're, we're the, the the day before the FA Cup final, or the Thursday, just a couple of days before the FA Cup final. It was on Friday, actually. The story broke. Story broke that Ten Hag, irrespective of the result, will be losing his job. And that journal came on and stood the story up here, right? Came on TalkSport. That's, that's Jacob, St- Jacob Steinberg, yeah? That, that, the Guardian, Jacob Steinberg has been robbed. Me for. That was an embarrassing story, by the way, for, for it to come out before an FA Cup well, final. Well, that's the, point, that's the point I'm making. Now, he that's will say... That's embarrassing for that to come out. He will say he's got his, it, that he was correct at the time of, of writing it. But I just feel as though it's... What is it? Nearly two and a half weeks. Been, uh, two and a half weeks. Where did he get that from? info from? That could that could have just been a bit of clickbait. Like, where did he really get no, that I info don't, from? I don't, well, listen to him talk. I mean, there's, I don't think a journo is going to put his reputation on the line for a little bit of clickbait. And that's that's not what that's not what he does. That's not the guard. I'm, I'm just glad I it's been sorted. I'm just I'm just glad it's been sorted because now I'm just, I'm just looking at it like you know what that's it. The situation's not dragging on. Let's just get behind him. Let's just show him the support now. And, you know, now, like, okay. I think there was a previous caller who mentioned the, you know, the people behind the board, Wilcox yeah. and Barada. Hopefully now they can give him the plays that, uh, that the squad need. You know, I don't want to hear anything about injuries now. The, the guys have a whole summer, you know, get them in, get them fit, get them sharp. Okay. And I just think he goes into the job now with su- such immense pressure and under such a microscope. Because if mm-hmm. he goes in and we start the season poorly, where do we turn to then? Because I just opened up Sky Sports not too long ago, and they're saying they're going to give him a contract extension. Yeah. Well, they, so they give him two, three years, and he starts the season poor. What then? Then the pressure is going to be immense. Well, they've got to, they've got to back they've got to back the manager as well as coming out and saying he's our manager next year. He can't go into the. Well, you can't. You, you can't, you can't give him a one year left. deal. No, no. You can't give him a one year deal because no. that's not showing any faith. No, it's 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 the year plus two more. I would have thought. Yeah, that would be. I think I think it might probably be two plus one potentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now one plus two. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, well, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't hurt your head. Don't hurt your head doing too much math, boy. <laughs> and top man, mate. I appreciate Cheers, you coming Ed. on. The Sports Bar with Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy, Monday to Thursday nights from ten on AM on DAB via the Talksport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.